In daily production, besides the jogging control of motor rotation, a more common requirement is to maintain the motor in a continuous rotating state for extended periods. This necessitates a circuit that can keep the motor running, and this is what we are going to learn about, the three-phase asynchronous motor forward self-locking circuit. For motors that need to run for extended periods, using jogging control is inconvenient. This is where a forward control circuit with self-locking functionality is needed, which is known as a continuous duty control circuit. But what is self-locking? Self-locking refers to a phenomenon where an AC contactor, through its normally open auxiliary contact, keeps the contactor coil energized. The contact responsible for this self-locking effect is known as the contactor's self-locking contact. In the diagram, the contact enclosed in a red box is the normally closed contact that serves this self-locking function, known as the contactor's self-locking contact. This is the schematic diagram of the forward self-locking circuit. In comparison with the jogging control circuit diagram, the forward control self-locking circuit includes an additional self-locking contact for the contactor. The main circuit components include a low-voltage short circuit breaker, QS, a set of main circuit fuses, FU1, a contactor KM with normally open main contacts, a thermal relay FR with thermal elements, and the motor M. The auxiliary circuit components consist of a set of auxiliary circuit fuses, FU2, a thermal relay FR with a normally closed contact, a stop button SB1, a start button SB2, and a contactor KM with the coil and self-locking contact. Let's proceed with the circuit analysis for further understanding. First, close the circuit breaker QS, press the start button SB2, energize the AC contactor KM coil, and its self-locking contact will close, establishing self-locking. Release the start button SB2, and the coil remains energized due to self-locking. The normally open contacts of the contactor in the main circuit close, connecting the motor load, and the motor begins to rotate. When the stop button SB1 is pressed, the coil of contactor KM1 loses power. The contactor self-locking resets, the normally open contacts open, and the motor stops rotating. Next, let's delve into the low-voltage components and materials used in practical training about circuits. These include combination buttons, AC contactors, fuses, thermal relays, wires of four different colors, terminal blocks, and circuit breaker rails. The tools needed for the training include wire strippers, needle nose pliers, flathead and Phillips screwdrivers, and a multimeter. During the wiring process, adhere to the following procedural requirements. Avoid point-to-point -point wiring, jump wires, and hanging wiring. Strictly follow the left main, right auxiliary principle for wiring. Use 2.5 square meter aluminum wires for the wiring. Employ red, green, and yellow wires for the main circuit, blue for the control circuit, and soft wires for connecting buttons to terminal blocks. Let's now explore the practical steps. Step 1, Installation and Fixing of Components. Arrange the components on the electrical training bench in a top to bottom, left to right order. Step 2, Wire Preparation and Connection. Begin with the power supply wiring. Select the appropriate wires of red, yellow, and green colors. And strip the insulation with wire strippers. Bend the wires neatly using needle nose pliers, with 90 degree angles at each corner.
and secure them to the appropriate component connections. This completes the power supply wiring. Next, we will install the main circuit. Similarly, just follow the schematic diagram. The main circuit installation is now completed. Finally, use a blue wire for the auxiliary circuit, following the diagram. Connect the soft wires from the buttons to the terminal blocks. This completes the auxiliary circuit wiring. With this, the wiring is completed except for the motor. Step 3. Organizing the toolbox and workspace. After wiring and installation, return the tools to their proper places and tidy up the workspace. Before applying power, perform a thorough test to identify any potential faults, especially short circuits. Use a multimeter for testing after calibrating it. Plug in the probes, set the range to the buzzer mode, and short circuit the red and black leads, a buzzer sound indicates successful calibration. Proceed to check the auxiliary circuit with the multimeter by connecting the probes to both ends of the circuit. Any readings without a buzzer sound signify correctness. Press the start button SB2. If there's a change in the multimeter readings without a buzzer sound, the wiring is correct and the circuit is ready for power. Finally, we proceed to power on and test. Ensure the circuit is free from anomalies before connecting the motor. Close the circuit breaker. Press the start button SB2, the contactor coil locks itself, and the motor starts rotating forward continuously. Press the stop button SB1. The contactor coil loses power, disengages, and the motor gradually stops. This completes the practical installation and operation process of this circuit. In the context of prolonged operation, the three-phase asynchronous motor forward rotation self-locking circuit might encounter various anomalies, loss of voltage, undervoltage, overload, and short circuit. Loss of voltage occurs when the power supply suddenly stops while the motor is running. To prevent automatic reconnection upon power restoration, the circuit breaker is used for voltage loss protection. Undervoltage refers to a situation where, during the operation of a motor, if the power supply voltage decreases, the motor's current will increase, leading to abnormal current in the motor and causing damage to the motor. When the power supply voltage drops to a certain level, the electromagnetic mechanism of the contactor causes the main contact that was closed to revert to a normally open state, leading to the motor's halt and achieving undervoltage protection. Overload refers to a situation where the current flowing through the main circuit becomes excessively high, leading the motor to be in an overloaded state within the circuit. This can cause damage to the motor. When the circuit is in an overloaded state, the thermal elements of the thermal relay in the main circuit generate heat, which causes the normally closed contact of the thermal relay in the auxiliary circuit to open. Consequently, the coil of the contactor loses power, leading to the motor losing power and coming to a stop. This mechanism serves as overload protection. A short circuit is when a circuit experiences a short circuit phenomenon, causing a rapid increase in current, which can lead to component damage. 
When a short circuit is detected, the fuse that we previously mentioned serves as a protection mechanism. The fuse automatically and quickly melts, causing the fuse to break and open the circuit where the fuse is located. This action effectively cuts off the faulty circuit. In this section, we've learned about the three-phase asynchronous motor forward rotation self-locking circuit through practical installation and operation, understanding its composition and principles, and analyzing potential anomalies during operation. This foundation will be valuable for future circuit installation and maintenance. That concludes this lesson. Thank you, everyone.